Okay, welcome everybody to Roland Academy webinar series. My name is Eric Zimmerman, product manager here at Roland. So today we're going to be covering part two of our partner webinar series with uh, CGS, uh, going over packaging solutions from design to mock-up. And again, this is part two. Uh, so if you are just tuning in and you haven't seen part one, I encourage you to um, to go look at our webinar archive and part one is recorded and you can watch that uh, and then this one will be posted up too after uh, after the webinar is done we'll have that have that posted up so you can have a link to the complete webinar series so without further ado what I will do is hand it over to Heath at CGS and he is going to take you through part two Good morning everyone Again, we're going through the, uh, um, the CGS packaging solution designed to mock-up. Uh, we did our part one. We went through a little bit of a technical overview of our, our products uh, and a, a full review of how it's done and things of that nature. What I wanted to cover today is more of the business case of why uh, people are looking into our products and what it is providing. So one of the things that we always get asked is why should we look into the packaging market? What is the reason behind that? <clears throat> Well, packaging is the largest growth potential for the future. Uh, we've seen the global containers and packaging market has grown 6% in 2010 and reached a value of $490 billion. Uh, in 2015, the projected um, container and packaging market forecast is going to be at $596 billion, which is a 21.6% increase. So with that, we're seeing a lot of growth potential, and as we all know, packages are not going away. We still have packages for all of our materials, all of our, all of our food items, our you know, drugs and different things of that nature that we're purchasing, medications, other items within the supermarket. You walk in, you see all these things, and you have uh, an idea of how large that market really is. So what we want to do as well is we have clients that have come to us, and what they're saying about us really is since the, uh, they've attained the Roland BS 300 along with the Aura solution, uh, they've, uh, we can now visualize countless effects already in the design phase, which is used used to be uh, possible with laborious and expensive techniques. A lot of these clients would actually go to the press to run these off and see how it's produced on press prior to a full production run. Uh, what we've seen now with the uh, adoption of our software along with the Roland BS and being able to see these effects on different materials, they're able to accomplish that in a much reduced time frame as well as a cost reduction. <clears throat> in today's presentation, really what I want to focus on is taking a project from a die line adding in our artwork to a two-dimensional uh, two box. One of the things that we can also do is then show a three-dimensional box and how that construction is. But the true purpose of today is really to see not only the, the start and the design of that, but then to finalize on the printed product on our Roland VS using our software. So as you can see, we're taking it from our design to our mock-up. Um, and we're using all the different solutions that I just kind of showed there. I'm going to go through uh, a little bit of a brief run through on some software at the very end just to give you an idea of that. So with Aura's FlexPack and the Roland, we have the ability to go in um, and use that software to build our mock-ups on the output. You can see the Roland BS really has that ability with the different metallic ink as well as the white and some additional features. In combination with that Roland on our software, we can then add in our media uh, solutions. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, looking into different medias and also formulating these medias to work with and in conjunction with the Roland VS device. Uh, we have uh, aluminum foil, shrink uh, clear film, clear films, adhesive clears, uh, silver films, uh, as well as glossy paper and a transfer media which allows us to transfer using a lamination process to any other type of material, be it a film, a board material, whatever it may be. So it gives a lot of flexibility to that device. Some examples of that, looking at this piece here, this is produced on a silver film. 
uh, has a white underlay with uh, the four color process on top. Uh, it gives you a true production piece of a label that was output. When we look at our clear adhesive, we can get into labeling. Uh, again, done with a white underprint, uh, then adding the four color process on top, along with also a die cut around that label in order to uh, affix that to whatever package is uh, needed. The shrink clear, I wish I had a 3D of this one to show you, uh, to show exactly how we could shrink that around a bottle. Uh, but then on this output, you do the white underlayment, uh, add the four color, print that out as, along with the silver, uh, and you can then shrink that material to that final piece uh, to show the client that composition proof. Clear film, again, another label that we're outputting there with the silver uh, gold. Doesn't really show the impact as much in the presentation, but the final piece had a nice gold um, metallic finish. But of course, we have to throw in the Roland uh, wine bottles. I'm not sure if everybody knew that they made wine as well, but uh, something additional that we actually added in there. And that is actually they don't make wine, but we did make a label for them to produce on a few different shows uh, to show that effect. So with the, the cutting feature, this metallic, the white, we can do a lot of different items with that. One of the things that we've added to uh, the product lineup, lineup is looking at the standard ink set. Uh, the standard inks that come with that are the cyan, magenta, yellow, black, along with light cyan, light magenta, white, and a metallic silver. Again, this is the VS device. When we look at adding to our ink set, the CGS extended gamut, we have the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. We've optimized those inks for purity uh, and, and color gamut awareness. We've added in the orange and green, so we've taken out that light cyan, light magenta, and added in an orange and green to extend the gamut even further, uh, along with still the white and metallic ink uh, for the other functions of the device. An example of that would be to look at these color patches. These are just some random um, spot colors uh, that are labeled above the, uh, the patches there. Uh, this is a simulation uh, to show this. You can see our, our Pantone 102, 286 and so on across compared between the standard ink set and then adding in that orange and green. You can see the purity of color as well as the, um, the Delta E has been reduced in comparison to that Pantone color. To visibly say that in a, in a color gamut, uh, you can see the size of our overall gamut of the output of the device, which is in the, uh, the multicolored window or color gamut. Uh, inside of there, you can see a brief outline that's actually like a grackle color space to show us that. And then the, the blue dots scattered around the screen there are really the spot colors of a, a typical Pantone solid coated. We're achieving around 95% of that uh, solid coated library. And before that, we were about 85, so it's a 10% increase overall. Some of the specifics to the Roland uh, that we felt were good to mention are definitely the, the white and silver uh, ink for simulating different metallic colors on the VS model. Um, using those to print uh, separately or in multiple layers. One thing that we've liked with the device and used in our software is the ability to do that multiple layer output by putting the white either under or over color or multiple hits of white or multiple hits of metallic depending on whatever you want to accomplish, it's capable of doing that. It has a return to zero functionality that really provides a lot of capability of what you want to accomplish in a mock-up. Then when we get into the white and clear uh, or varnish ink for simulating different varnish or emboss effects, uh, we can do that on the LEC model, uh, which is their UV printer and gives you the capability to do, again, that multi-pass um, and layment of the different colors that you have or the varnishes. Uh, once we go beyond the inks, we get into our advanced cutting controls, which we could do a color a cut contour uh, or cut only functionality, printing or cutting just boards and getting a simulated white box or whatever we may want to do, um, or even getting into a perforation cut. So the combination of the, the, the ink sets, uh, the white metallic or the varnish uh, on the uh, LEC really provides you the complete solution to uh, make those mock-ups that we're trying to accomplish. Some cost comparison to give you uh, that ROI or an idea of an ROI. A lot of people today in this market are using uh, either Kodak approval, Fuji Final Proof, uh, 
the waterproof technology, whatever may be out there from a technology standpoint, they've been using those and they're getting end of life. Uh, one of the things to look at that is the cost of production, uh, for example, in a Kodak approval, and you're talking about $66.5 that you're going to pay per those proofs. When you get into the Color Tuner Web and Roland CS device, you drop that down to a $16 charge or $16 cost per proof uh, for each of those. And that's $13 in media and $3 for that ink um, based on a typical size job. So one of the things I wanted to show is some of the things that we worked with um, to get that final piece. Um, we really uh, worked with design to build a, uh, a box. And one of the solutions that we like to show for that is, let me get out of the presentation here, is actually our approved solution, which is the ability to communicate on a project. So we had that project of the, the box, the Oris box that we were working on, the Oris package. So we drop that job into our um, system. The first version that was done was loaded in. So if I go back to version one here, we had a version one. There were some comments that were made within here to make some changes uh, by the designer. So those changes were then made, and version two was uploaded. So we saw a dye line change as well as some color changes. If we want to see those comparisons, we can pull up side by side. We can see that we brightened that orange and green. So this is kind of showing our standard uh, output versus our high color or our orange and green output, or XG ink. We can do a slide comparison to see that there's some additional spots added. Or we can pull up here and look and show differences between these. So this allows us really to see uh, where the items were changed and the colors that were altered for that output. Uh, at that point, we could even come in here. We can then say that I want to pull my contract proof. Pull my contract proof that will go directly to Color Tuner Web for output. And for those of you that want to see more on that Color Tuner Web piece, I would suggest that you look at part one because that goes more into detail of that Color Tuner Web. So when I want to pull that contract proof, I can select where I want to output and print that however many copies that I would like to do for the results. To end the project, the, the, um, whoops, the designer was able to come in here and validate that so we can see a dashed line around there. And that accomplished the final piece from design to that final mock-up that we produced. So that kind of shows the full step process going through there. Uh, as you saw, we also had that three-dimensional uh, piece that was actually using another product um, called 3D Packager. With that, we're able to go in and build the different pieces that we have. So within there, we can build a three-dimensional piece as we saw as that movie. So here's our three, 3D item to show that, and then our final mock-up with the metallics and different items there would be visible on that final production piece on the roller. So that kind of shows you all the tools that were used. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open more for questions or anything that needs to be discussed. So we kept it short and sweet this time to give more time if there's questions or uh, also to not take up too much of everybody's time today. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for their time. Um, since there's no questions. And uh, if you do have questions, of course, there will be uh, the webinar posted on the uh, Roland website. Um, and then also they would have information on how to contact us on our products. And uh, if there's further questions, please let us know. Otherwise, thank you for your time. Uh, appreciate uh, everybody joining in on the webinar today. And hopefully you have a great afternoon.